everyone, and welcome to the Week 7 edition of Instant Replay, where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Borg. We start in Vancouver, where Freddie Montero was the star with two goals against his former club, the Seattle Sounders. But he really risked getting sent off before he had a chance to score his two goals. In the 53rd minute, check out how he goes in on Harry Ship. And Montero, who gets a yellow from referee Kevin Stott for that challenge, well, he's lucky he bent that knee or it would have been red. Another play to look at from BC Place. It was the 23rd minute, and Sounders playmaker Nicolas Lodeiro, who was already on a yellow, kicked out at Vancouver's Matias Lava. And fortunately for him, he didn't make any contact. Next up, we stay in Cascadia for the big match in Portland between the Timbers and Sporting Kansas City. And SKC really took it to the Timbers in this one, and the visitors wanted a first half penalty in minute 32 when Portland defender Alvis Powell looked to use his hand and arm to make contact with this ball in his own box. The contact is slight, but it's there. I would have called it, but referee Drew Fisher says play on, likely deeming it incidental. There was another alleged handball on the same play, this by Portland's Diego Chara, but had that been called, I think it would have been spotted outside the box. Fisher wasn't calling that one either. Sporting KC won the match and they were leading in the 83rd minute when Ford Dom Dwyer appealed with the referee for a penalty, but Fisher doesn't call it. When I look at the replay, it seems to me like Portland defender Roy Miller clips Dwyer's leg from behind and causes him to trip. And Sporting head coach Peter Vermees is convinced. Read his lips. It's a foul. To San Jose, where I thought the hometown Earthquakes had a strong case for a penalty in the 11th minute when FC Dallas defender Minor Figueroa seems to bring his right arm across his body to block the cross by San Jose's Cordel Cato. But referee Armando Villarreal doesn't call it, and his assistant who's right there doesn't flag it either. There was a handball shout in the 54th minute in Orlando, but as you can see from the replay here, LA's Jermaine Jones has little time to react. The ball emerges from underneath Orlando's Giles Barnes at the last second. Plus, Jones has his arms tucked in all the way. Nothing there. In Columbus, Crew SC came back from 1-0 down at home to win, and their first goal had a hint of an offside. But I thought assistant referee Kyle Atkins nailed this one. We don't have the best angle to judge for sure, but Ola Kamara looks like he's even with the last defense on the cross. The referee in this one was Nima Sagafi, and I thought he did a good job keeping his whistle in his pocket on this risky but clean tackle by Toronto's Justin Morrow in the 51st minute. He makes a great play on the ball before Cruessi's Nico Hansen can get to it. And for my money, this was the best decision of the weekend and not an easy one to make. Rough times in Philly where the Union lost again, but I thought they could have had a penalty after just a minute and change when CJ Sapong is trying to chase this ball. But from a distance, it looks like New York City FC defender Ethan White has his arms all over him. No call from referee Jose Carlos Rivero. Meanwhile, there are no grounds for the Union's penalty shot just a few minutes later. As you can see here, the ball comes off Alexander Kalin's chest, not his arm, although the Union players argue differently. New York City FC won the match 2-zip with two second-half goals, but the visitors thought they should have had a penalty in the first half. It's the 30th minute when Union defender Richie Marquez blocks this shot with his arm, and some will argue that it was a natural position. I disagree. I say that when Marquez takes to the ground to try to block the ball, in my opinion, he's trying to make himself big. That's a penalty to me, but Jose Carlos Rivero doesn't call it. He also doesn't issue any cards to Phillies Alejandro Bedoya in the 39th minute for this stomp on David Villa. The Spaniard is irate, and rightly so. That's way, way late, and it looks to me like Bedoya was seeking out the contact with the player. No foul called by the referee, who had a great no call in the 69th minute. This is a clean tackle on a 50-50 ball by defender Maxime Chano, who beats El Cino to this ball. No protest from El Cino, and the referee awards the corner kick. On to Red Bull Arena, and we saw what I thought was a great no-call by referee Soren Stoika in the 11th minute, when New York's Felipe goes down in the box. But that's a fair challenge by DC United's Ian Harks. No foul. The Red Bulls, like New York City FC, also won 2-0, and they doubled their lead right after the break. But DC keeper Bill Hamid looked like he was making the case that he was either fouled or that he was screened by a Red Bulls player who may have been in an offside position. But the replay shows that New York's Kamar Lawrence is on the right side of that DC player who's hugging him, and I don't see a foul. This first Atlantic Cup showdown of the year was especially chippy in the first half, and Red Bulls defender Aurelien Collin reacted here as if something fishy went down. But I can't see anything illegal here from forward Jose Guillermo Ortiz, at least from the angles available. Lots more debate in Houston, where we had a rough challenge as early as the fourth minute, when Houston's Ricardo Clark challenges Johan Venegas like this. We don't get a good look at it on replay, but referee Robert Sabiga gave the advantage and no cards were issued. Venegas was on the receiving end of another crunching challenge to start the second half, and this one came with a good degree of force from Houston's Oscar Bonia Garcia, but no foul called by the referee. I'd argue visiting Minnesota should have had a penalty in the 19th minute when they were down a goal. Check out how Dynamo defender Adolfo Machado uses his right arm to tug down on Minnesota forward Christian Ramirez in the box. No whistle from Sabiga, and Loon's head coach Adrian Heath can't believe it. The Dynamo thought they had made it 2 0 in the 34th minute, but this goal by Albert Elise was called back after assistant referee TJ Zablocki raised his 
freeze flagged. I agree that in real time it looked offside, but the freeze frame suggests that Elise may have been kept on by Minnesota's Mark Birch when the cross came in. I thought the Loons got lucky there and again in the 36th minute when right back Jerome Thiessen was shown a yellow by Sabiga for this kick from behind which took down Houston's Mauro Manotas. But I'd argue that the force of Thiessen's foul was arguably worthy of a straight red card. In Bridgeview, the Fire won comfortably 3-0 but they thought they had the lead in the 20th minute when number 23 Nemanja Nikolic found the back of the net. But that's a great call by assistant referee Adam Winkowski. On the header by the number 9 Luis Solinac right here, Nikolic is in fact offside. The Fire had an easier time of it after the red card shown to Revolution left back Javon Watson in the 27th minute. The Jamaican international received his first yellow card about five minutes before for this reckless arm to the face of Solignac. Although I'd argue this could have been a straight red similar to the Marco Donadel Jermaine Jones play from last week. I felt that Watson put some above average force behind that foul. Then referee Ted Uncle had no choice but to show a second yellow when Watson just chops down Solignac. And two yellows make a red. So Kellen Rowe moved in to play left back for the Revs in place of Watson and he risked big time when he challenged Firestar Bastian Schweinsteiger in the box four minutes from halftime. But referee Ted Uncle had a better look than we do and didn't call it. That wasn't the only fire PK appeal of the match. It was already 2-0 when Michael Delu hit the deck in the Revs box in the 53rd minute. Now, Delu doesn't protest, but I sure thought that was a penalty. I think defender Joshua Smith is playing late to this ball. Referee Ted Uncle awards the goal kick. And about 10 minutes later, there was what looks like a punch on the ball by Revs center back Antonio de la Mea in the box. But no infraction was called by the officials. To yet another wild edition of the Rocky Mountain rivalry between Colorado and Real Salt Lake. And the Rapids felt like they should have had a penalty five minutes after the break as Sebastian Sauce kicks the ball off his own right arm. It's a penalty to me, but referee Ismail Elfath rules it incidental and doesn't call the PK. But Elfath did point to the spot in the 85th minute after Rapids defender Jared Watts used his hand to swat away a shot destined for the back of the net. Not only was it a penalty, but it was also a red card offense for denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity. And there's no doubt about that one to me. Yuram of Sistian would score the PK and Real Salt Lake would find a late winner to beat their rivals on the road. And we end in Montreal where there was another Doxo discussion and it came just before halftime. Let's break it down. First, to me, there's no doubt here that Atlanta defender Leandro Gonzalez Pires fouls Montreal forward Mateo Mancosu. So I'm on board with the penalty kick. But Gonzalez Pires was also shown a red card by referee Alan Kelly for Doxo, and that's the part I feel is more debatable. To me, this is a yellow Doxo incident instead of the red card variety, and here's why. First, Gonzalez Pires is making a play on the ball. Also, one of the conditions referees take into consideration is the likelihood of the attacking player keeping or gaining control of the ball, and with the benefit Benefit of replay, it looks to me like the ball was behind Mancoso when he started going down. Obviously, that detail might have been a difficult one for referee Alan Kelly to see from his vantage point. Another big call Kelly had to make came in minute 13 when Montreal defender Victor Cabrera takes down Atlanta's Miguel Almiron from behind like this. Cabrera gets a yellow card for it, but I think this could have been punished by a straight red for endangering the safety. Cabrera comes out of the match anyway, turns out he was the one who suffered injury on that play. And I thought there could have been another red card situation in the 75th minute. Call me cynical, but it seems to me like Montreal's Ambrazo Yongo is swinging those hands back, not to shield the ball, but to make contact with Atlanta's Kevin Kratz. And kudos to assistant referee Jeffrey Greeson on the stoppage time winner scored by the impact's Anthony Jackson Amel. Atlanta's Chris McCann definitely keeps him on. Let us know your thoughts on these plays in the comments, and we'll see you again next week. Until then, for our editor Rich Hernandez, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time!